What's up, Chris? What's happening? You're always making trouble on the internet. I do this. Out there calling people out, and then they won't debate you. You've offered to go be in person, so we're relegated to just reacting to their videos, I, you know, which is fun. It's sad. I, I got to tell a little bit of backstory here. So okay. this guy called me out one time, uh, made a video debunking me on my perspective of IUL, and then I kind of called him out in his comments. And then self-admittedly, in the comments, he admitted that, oh, I haven't really watched much of your content. I just saw this one video and he like deducted all this stuff from it. I made a, a video responding to him. I challenged him to a debate and I'm like, you know, David, if you're so confident, this is your opportunity to put me in my place and show the world that you're right, I'm wrong, all this stuff. And then uh, I offered to debate him. He said he couldn't, he lived in Puerto Rico. I said, don't threaten me with a good time. I'll fly to Puerto Rico anytime. And um, you know, like we're moving the Dominican pretty shortly that, we'll yeah. be like neighbors david like let's go uh but i'll fly any and that offer still stands he wrote, a book. He wrote a book power zero look before you lerp which is life insurance retirement plan which how do you feel about that i don't love the term i don't love the concept of retirement plan with mm-hmm. insurance yeah. either so yeah though, i'm sure we'll have some reaction yeah here. we'll have some so let's get it this is this all video right. is all about you know iul over whole life why he okay. uh and and I haven't watched it all. I saw the title. It's a newer video of his, but it's two reasons he prefers IUL over whole well, life. Let's so let's out. go. In today's video, you'll see part two of my interview with certified financial planner, professional Brent Bowden, in which we discuss two reasons why I prefer index universal life over whole life. Just talk a little bit about so the difference. There's tons of different types of cash value life insurance policies. You know, why do you like the IUL over kind of the older? First off, mm. same haircut. Yeah. <laughs> I'm digging it. <laughs> Similar beard. It, it's almost like father son yeah. that we're watching here. He, yep. So. Yep. Full life policy, and you know, what makes that different? Obviously, there's there's also variable ones out there for people who want to be a little riskier. But you know, the IUL for people who want to be a little riskier. Did he just insinuate that IUL wasn't risky? Right. And for people that want to be a little riskier, let's debunk mm-hmm. that for a minute. Mm-hmm. People believe risk equals return. Mm-hmm. And that erroneous belief leads people to take unnecessary risk that confiscates wealth. Completely. This is a big part of why I wrote Killing Sacred Cows. I was so yep. frustrated with people being like, risk means chance of losing. Yep. So how does increasing your chance of losing help you win? Don't we help. want people to mitigate their risk. I work mm-hmm. with so many entrepreneurs that are taking plenty of risk in their business. Yeah. They're creating new products with intellectual property. Real yep. estate investors that you work with are yep. taking calculated risks with that. Why yep. do they now want to take and put their money in something they know even less about and take a bunch of risk when they already have other things that they have a lot more control and influence over right. that they're taking risk on. So just that quick little statement that was like, some people want to take a little more risk. Well, right now, if you're doing IUL versus whole life, you've yeah. actually already chosen to take more risk. Yeah, 100%. IUL tends to be one that I like a lot for some features, but what's your opinion on that? Um, you know, I, I like the IUL over, say, whole life, and I, I've got a lot of people that read the Power of Zero who who utilize whole life. So I'm not historically been one to dump on whole life. I think it has a place. But one of the issues with whole life are the loan. I don't usually dump on whole life, but I'm about to dump, I'm about on, to whole dump life. on whole life. <laughs> so the, the question becomes, how do you get money out of these? Interesting term too, dump. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yep. <laughs> Crap. Ah, dump, yeah, exactly. Shit. Exactly. Here we go. Policies tax free. And the reality is the best way to do it is by way of what we call a, a policy loan. And basically what you're doing is you're taking a loan from the life insurance company. Okay. From the life insurance. That's yep. good. Yep. They're charging you a rate of interest. And at the same time, the insurance company is taking money out of your cash value and they're putting in what I call a loan collateral account. And they're charging you a, sorry, they're crediting you a rate of interest. So you've got two sides of the ledger here. You got the insurance company that's, that's charging you a rate of interest. And then they're crediting you back a rate of interest in the money that's been placed into that loan collateral account. I've seen life insurance policies where they charge you four, uh, they, they charge you eight percent, but they credit you back only four percent. So, and- yeah, I mean, where are those? So, so here's the deal: like he's he's gonna come at this from a place of I think a big thing he does. I don't th- I don't know if he's gonna go here in this video, but a big component that he focuses on is what he calls loan arbitrage, the 0% loan provision, yeah. which isn't even really a thing, by the way. 
he, that's him basically saying that's his terminology wash and loan as they the call wa- it it's yeah. the wash loan right so if you're going to earn four percent or pay four percent you're going to earn four percent and so it's going to cancel each other out so it's a zero percent loan provision right like that's where he's going for and and i haven't seen this but like i bet you he's about to say you can't do that in whole life in other words there's a net cost of borrowing of four percent and that doesn't seem like a big deal but that interest grows and compounds over time and if you don't pay that interest back at the end of the year they subtract it from your cash value and then the next year you take another loan they charge you another four percent but you haven't paid back the loan from the first year so now you're paying the interest from the first year and the interest from the second year and that snowballs and compounds to the point where it could really um force you to run out of money in your life insurance policy 10 to 15 years faster than you were anticipating at which time you get this tax bill we'd be like yeah you shouldn't do that yeah i mean he's he's hitting the nail on the head that's the problem and yeah. and so i'm uh, we're, we're on the same page so yeah. far where's the turn yeah exactly right? and you lose your death benefit so it can be really bad it's like and man if you do that with iul that's a policy lapse or with any policy yeah. it's a policy lapse yep. and now you could owe tax Huge. on those gains not just the gains you own ta- you owe tax on all the loans that are outstanding too it's really ugly it's ugly like getting divorced you know a lot of bad stuff happens when you get divorced you don't want this to happen to your life insurance policy so i make the case that that the only time you should really um be married to a life insurance policy you know for the rest of your life is if you have a zero percent loan provision now i gotta warn you some companies out there say we'll start you at zero Mm -hmm. but we reserve the right to change it to one two four eight one you know at our leisure that's no good either because if you give a life insurance company 40 years to make up their mind their fox is in your chicken coop and i can guarantee we're in alignment with that right yeah i mean yes yes and no i mean he's talking about like the zero percent loan provision the the problem that i have and i know he's going to go here so i'm just going to call it before he does because it's on my mind He's talking about the 0% loan provision. The problem is when you run a wash loan, he's talking about the fact that he's comparing apples to apple, or he's comparing apples to oranges, but he's pretending he's comparing apples to apples. So he's saying in an IUL, you have this wash loan provision option, right? And so therefore you can control the loan costs. So therefore you're protected, right? And he's going to say that you can't do that in whole life, which whole life is a much more predictable you may not control it completely but it's certainly more predictable and you can you know you, you can and he's going to neglect mentioning right. m e mortality costs yeah. changing in iul exactly and, and the term chassis you know with 100%. that cost going up over time through mortality and when you when you run um illustrations with iul and you run the index loan or participating loan or variable loan option it's all the same thing different companies call those them basically by those three names you are building in 50 basis points of positive arbitrage on the illustration. That's not how it's going to really work, right. but you're injecting so a ton a half more a risk. percent of gain essentially yep. because you're you're going to make more than the yeah. borrowing cost. And what happens is that makes it so the illustrated looks income, amazing. it looks uh, sexy. It's like, yeah. it's sexy. Yeah. That at some point in time, they're going to change things in their, in their favor. So I really prefer LIRPs that have a... So first off, LIRP is a term he made up. Life insurance retirement plan. Good marketing play. Good marketing play, but that's not a real thing. Yeah. It's just an index universal life policy. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Guaranteed 0% loan, ironclad loan provision. It's guaranteed in the contract. Let's say this too. Like he wrote the book, The Power of Zero. He wrote the Look Before You Lerp. And the whole idea behind this, like I agree with a lot of the things he says. A lot of the stuff he talks about in, in The Power of Zero, the taxing, uh, the benefits of taxation and the idea of getting to a 0% tax bracket, not being able to do it without life insurance and all these different it's things. just the chassis he's using. I get, like, I agree with 95% of it. The problem is, my problem with it as a from a principal perspective is that he's using all these concepts to push IUL sales through his IMO. Like, you know, and it's all to push this product that is actually injecting a ton more risk into your personal financial world, then you realize, and it's a highly complicated, highly yeah. sophisticated, much what more is risky it, like product. Ten to one people sell an IUL versus it's, whole life. At least it's crazy now. Like I don't even know the number, but it's yeah. probably more than that at this point in time. Contract. They can never ever change it um, because you want that loan provision to be tax free and cost free. All loan provisions. First off, how could it be cost free? Yeah. He, like that's a, that's a technique like let's talk about that technicality because 
Well, you're no longer earning the index if you're at at a wash loan, are you? Well, he's he's saying that it's a, a wa he's saying he's going to use the wash loan, so you're paying four percent, earning four percent, but you're giving up the upside. You're giving up the upside, which is and, a cost. Which is a cost. It is a cost. I'm right. just saying, like we have to talk about the full economic but structure. But here. it's even more than that because there's a cost of the net amount at risk, and because of the annual yeah. When you take a loan, does it change the net amount at it risk? It doesn't. No. So so when you take, let's say you're 65, when you take mm -hmm. your first LERP payment, right, like first LERP income payment. And you have two hundred thousand dollars net amount at risk. You're paying annual renewable term. So if you do a wash loan, now next year, and you haven't eaten into that net amount at risk like all these IUL agents say you do. So the older you get, the more expensive the 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 cost of that two hundred thousand dollars death benefit. And so there's absolutely a cost in this zero uh, loan zero so percent loan let me, provision. So let me be clear: when you take a loan that's a wash loan, yeah, that does or doesn't count against your net amount at risk. It does not. Does reduce not. your net net amount at risk. It, it it doesn't increase it. It doesn't increase it either. It'll, it's, it'll it's keep it the same. Keeps it the same. Okay. It, yeah. So it. That's good. But when it keeps it the same. But you give up the upside of the index. But when but On you're that also amount. that amount your your cost of that same amount of net amount at risk goes up every single year, right? Right. Right. Of whatever is that. Whatever it because is. Because of mortality. Right. Right. Exactly. Which, if that lapses, creates a major problem. Mm -hmm. All loan provisions are tax free, but they're not all cost free. And so the devil's in the details when it comes to those loan provisions and IULs um, have certain IULs with certain carriers have guaranteed loan provisions, 0% loan provisions, whole life policies do not. And if the goal is to build money up. So let's talk about that. Yeah. Whole life loan provisions, direct recognition, non-direct recognition, correct. Those two things and what we're dealing with, with differences in loan, mm -hmm because it isn't going to be a wash loan. No, it's not. I mean, um, when you're, this could be a video on its own that could be a half hour long explaining this. So to keep it really simple, uh, when you, when you borrow against a whole life policy, there is going to be a cost to it, right? There, it's not positive arbitrage. It's not a wash. Um, in, in a, in a non-direct recognition company, if the environment were a specific way and the policy is old enough, like, you know, over the past 20 years and the, if the policy were 25 years old and not it could work and you could actually have positive arbitrage mm -hmm. right now if you're entering that retirement and you're th it's not going to be there right you're going to be you're going to be upside down you're going to have an extra expense but here's the deal dr wade Fowl talks about this all the time like you it's there are controllable elements right and, and the variables are much more predictable because and it's like anything else in the economy when when we can predict something and when we know something's going to happen and the variables are controllable. There's economic value of that. Certainly. There's economic, right, right, exactly. And and the problem with IUL is he's trying to just position it like, Only oh, the loan provision, the loan. But, but not talking about the lack of control of the mortality cost. Exactly. Which is, which is a much higher risk than the difference in what you're paying on your loan mm -hmm. versus receiving in your dividend. Equally as important. If so that, it's more important when you, right. when you scale the the variables and the comparisons against a whole life policy and you say all right whole life is gonna maybe not be able to have this wash loan guaranteed there may be a cost there may be positive arbitrage there may be a benefit who knows on the time who knows but it's not guaranteed but at least the standard deviation of that is much smaller right mm -hmm. like so it's more controllable more predictable so you when you're planning out your retirement income planning or your cash flow plan and retire you can manage that because the more cost of insurance can start eating away at your cash 100%. value yep where you know predictably what the loan interest rate is for right. that year. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Okay. Got it. So that somewhere down the road, you can take it out and spend it on your lifestyle at a period in time when tax rates are likely to be dramatically higher than they are today. Then the loan provision really becomes almost the most important provision in the entire contract because it did almost, he, almost. he missed that, almost. <laughs> you know, that lapse guarantee is going to be really yeah. important if you can make it there and the cost of insurance where it ends right. up because there's the guaranteed cost yep. and then there's the um, current cost. Right. And that depends on how many people are dying per thousand that own the policy that tends to get increased in right. older age. And what they're counting on is you're going to have a lot of cash value in comparison yep. to the death benefit. So that even yep. though the cost of insurance is going up, the net amount at risk is going down because right. of that cash value. And what you'll find is if you, if you run these and you're looking at uh, an illustration, and somebody runs like an index. Everybody runs these when you're an agent 
and the IUL agents out there run the index loans or participating loans because it increases your income by 50 to 100% compared to what it would run at a wash loan because and, and, and so you need to if you're going to so at least do he's this, mitigating risk with the loan where other people are exacerbating sure it, yeah I, but I will, not acknowledging this really important mm -hmm. variable of the cost of insurance and I will say like on the scale to give David credit like on the scale of IUL agents he's one of the better right like as far as like his conservative uh nature but like this is still yeah. very misleading let's see what this other important provision yeah. is yes determines how much of your money you can get and at what price so that's why I like IULs, particularly IULs that have guaranteed 0% loan provisions. And I think another provision that, you know, I always like to talk. It's, both. it's, it's, okay. we're both yeah. smashing buttons over here. Like that, it, it, it bugs me hearing him say, particularly companies that have the 0% loan. No company has a 0% loan provision. That is a marketing term, like a LERP. It's not a 0% loan. It's a wash loan. You have compounding. 4 interest cost, 4%, four percent and con earning. and and then compound and crediting right that that's going to happen right. right or crediting that you're getting every year and so like at any point but in it's time, not like it's you know what it reminds me of zero percent financing or three thousand dollars cash back right it's not a zero percent loan no. because you forfeit the three thousand dollars cash back 100 percent. right not exactly the same but it's ultimately language matters and you're paying for and you're getting for so that i'm fine with that being called a wash totally but calling it a zero percent loan it's a four percent loan yeah you're insinuating that there's no loan expense at all right because the other thing is you can change your loan declaration every single year right, right. and so if you change it all of a sudden you still have all these loan expenses yeah you know what i mean and yeah. so it's not like there's nothing there i always like to talk to uh to potential clients about is just you know medical professionals are very busy you know, they're, they're moving all the time and, uh, you know, don't have a, a ton of extra time to do some of that like work and market volatility is another thing that comes into play for them, managing as many risks as they can. You know, I think an IUL does a great job of it in contrast to some of the other cash value life insurance policies. A great job of what? I don't know. I don't know. Of managing the risk. Like, yeah. Yeah. So, um, what, what does the. IUL purport to do. The IUL purports to give you exposure to the upside of the market with a guarantee against market loss. That's, it's nothing exotic here. So, so you're getting. And I agree with that, but what we're not talking about is the options budget mm -hmm. and the cost of insurance. Mm -hmm. It's built on a term chassis. And the options cost. So in the options cost. Yeah. So okay, that's a very simple way of describing it mm -hmm. without these major factors that impact and have major implications. Right, because you're never really invested in the market. You're doing it through an option strategy, right? right? Like, and to me, the reason I don't like IUL is, be, you know, we talked about it last time I was up here. We both love win-win scenarios, right? We both believe life insurance companies, their, their strength is managing risk. So when you, when you go away from whole life and you go to Index Universal Life, you're taking the power and the strength of the insurance company away from them because they manage risk. And you're saying, listen, take the, take, take the guarantees that you were going to give me that you guys manage great on a long-term basis and just go put it on black. That's really what they're doing. If yeah. you understand options. And so you're taking the strength of the insurance company away from them. And you're saying, ah, just go play, play, play roulette. Yeah. And they're only talking about part of the story there. Yeah exposure to the upward movement of a stock market index, say the S and P 500, and you have a guarantee that you won't lose money as a result of the market. Okay. That's true on your cash value account. Mm -hmm. It's not true on the cost of insurance. True. So here's the thing. Yes. They're not going to come and take anything out of the bucket, but the cost of insurance is the leak in the bucket. Yeah. So you don't know how big those leaks are going to be. Right unless you look at the guaranteed side. Now the guaranteed side's never going to happen from the early years. It no. happens over time. Sure. But where I'm really concerned is when people are 70 and 80 years old mm. and we have even more longevity in the future, mm -hmm. right? But what happens is if you're healthy, you're going to get a new policy. Yep. If you're unhealthy, you're going to be stuck with other unhealthy people. Yeah. That's going to raise your cost of insurance at a time when you're supposed to be using it as a retirement plan and it's being eaten at yeah. from the higher cost of insurance. 100%. Yeah. And if the market underperforms mm -hmm. over time, they don't have enough options budget. The options don't perform well because there's too much, there's not enough market volatility because volatility right. makes a big difference with options. Totally. 
ultimately you might just end up with a lot less money than you thought. Mm -hmm. So why take risk in what would I would be using as an alternative to savings, not an alternative to the market? 100%. And I'm not going to sit here and tell you you can't have years in an IUL that are better than a whole life policy because you, you absolutely can, can. And you probably and you will. will, right? But we're talking about a 30 year, 20 year, 15 year, whatever time frame. And so it's about how does, what does it look like 30, 40 and 50 right. years from today, but they're to. looking at numbers yep. as if everything's going the way it's going now. Right. Now you may have a flat year in which they, the market went down and they credit you as zero, but they still take out the insurance expenses. So you're not guaranteed to lose money um in any given year because you could have a zero percent credit and they're still taking out the insurance expenses but they guarantee that you'll never lose money in the market okay and so um what sort of rate of return might someone be able to expect in their iul over the course of a lifetime well it's not going to be stock market like returns it's going to be like returns it's going to be bond like returns and what i typically tell people is between five to seven percent what do you think? I think that's based on uh, the history that we've been seeing so far. And I, you know, like he's going to show. That's uh, that's really like way more close to reality than when most people are talking eight to 12. Like that, when we did totally. another reaction video, he was yeah. saying 10. Yeah. And, and here's the deal. Like not he, him. Uh, he's Doug. like, you know, David McKnight here has been saying you can get seven to eight percent and and he's going to say, well, companies will show this. He, he does a lot of videos that show graphs of what the companies say you actually get. That's not what you actually get credited for. That's like what the index strategy has been. That's kind of like... Because we have to know the budget. You're right. That's like the gross benefit. Then you back out the net costs and everything after cost right. of insurance and everything. And so, like, at the end of the day, um, like I said, I don't think it's going to be 7%. I think it's going to be more in the 45 to 5%. Right. But that's just in today's economic environment. It could go we up We don't know bit. what it's going to be like, yeah. Right net of fees over the life of the program. Well, guess what? If you can get five to 7% net of fees without taking any more market risk than what you're accustomed to taking in your savings account, that's a pretty safe and pretty. Okay. That's an issue yeah. without taking any more risk than you used to taking in your savings account. Yeah. Your savings account, your bank doesn't go, Hey, depending on our, you know, performance right. and other savings in our loan, we might just start taking some of that savings account out through right. cost. I, I, and this that's, is, that's, that's, that's where I, you know, exactly you lost me right there. And that's where you and I talk about whole life insurance as a savings alternative, because it's got the same profile, right? You can't, right, they're they saying, can't this is like savings, right. but with return. Right. But you're also injecting a ton more risk, which yeah. goes against the whole purpose of using and life so it's insurance. It's not a savings for, alternative. Right. right. Exactly. You have the way to grow at least a portion of your portfolio. Now let's go back to your doctors and your healthcare professionals that are growing money outside of their retirement plan inside that brokerage account. And they're in a high marginal tax bracket. What? Let, let's assume they could get a six percent rate of return in their IUL. What rate of return would they have to get in their stock market portfolio in that taxable bucket? Assuming it's all short-term capital gains, what rate of return would they have to get in that in that bucket to be able to eclipse that six percent rate of return in the um, in the IUL? Well, you know, you do the whole thing where you. You divide 6% by one minus their marginal tax bracket, and that gets you to somewhere on the order of 9%, okay, for these people in the higher marginal tax rate. So, so in other words, if you were to... As long as the policy doesn't lapse. Yeah, exactly. Then you're in a lot of trouble. Yeah. But nobody's talking about here. But I've the, said similar things. Yeah, but the problem is, like, these, you're not going to know. The reason I can't stand IUL is because you're not going to know that you have a problem until it's too late. Right. Have the choice between an IUL versus growing money in a stock portfolio in your taxable bucket, your brokerage account, how, what, what rate of return would you be required to get to, in the end, net? So what he's talking about here, you and I both have a, a huge issue with because he's still kind of like doing this comparison stock market versus insurance. And he's still coming at it from like the retirement mindset, this right. accumulative kind of distribution, like, Right. Not, it's not value creation. It's not like investing in yourself. It's not like, you know what I mean? Like right. building anything of value. It's, it's, it's an easier sale. It's an easier conversation, you know? And I think that's why IULs are selling so many because it's easy to kind of deceive people based on the illustrations and then have a conversation with them that they're accustomed to hearing. Right. Mm -hmm. And this is kind of pitched as an alternative to a 401k, an alternative to an IRA or a 
rich man's Roth is what a lot of people call it because you can't, if you're a high net worth earner, you can't contribute you can't, to yeah, a Roth, yeah. but you could do an IUL. That's what they're trying to position, right? That is very different vehicles. But this is a like, Roth never going to come in with oh expenses gosh. in the future and be like, hey, right. You know what? Based upon the performance of Roth, exactly. we're going to start charging 5%. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Net more money than you would if you just invested in IUL, you'd have to get 9%. And you have to take all the risk commensurate to that 9% rate of return. And so now all of a sudden you're saying, wow, I can get tax-free growth. Even if it's growing only at 6%, that's probably superior to what I could get in a stock portfolio. Plus I get a death benefit that also doubles as long-term care. And so that this is why I think for people that you're addressing day in and day out, the IUL becomes a very, very um, compelling alternative for people that are growing money in that taxable bucket. Yeah, absolutely. And that's 9% net of fees. So that's right. If you have an advisor doing that for you, and then uh, you still have to. Well, they're saying that the five so to misleading. seven is net of fees. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like, it could happen. It could, it yeah. could, but like, here's the deal. It, we've been for a decade, we for a decade, we've been in the lowest interest rate environment. We had the greatest bull run of all time. Once again, I'm going to go back to my IUL challenge. And like, we came through the greatest bull run of all time with a product. He just said it here, provides upside potential due to market participation, right? We just came through the greatest bull run of all time. The IUL challenge says, just show me one illustration that outperformed the conservative illustration it was sold based on, because they all tell you it's conservative. And if we just had a great bull run, you should have participated in the upside. Right. But nobody did. Nobody has. Nobody's, and yeah. anybody that can show me, I'll pay you twenty five hundred bucks. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Account for that. So. That's right. Yeah. Well, shifting a little bit. So we talked a lot. Uh, I know in your book about kind of the, the tax ramifications, uh, as well as you know some of the uh, strategies that you look at. What's your thoughts on? He needs to see a sleep doctor, man. He's really tired. Yeah. <laughs> Stressful in Puerto Rico. Financial planning a lot of times doesn't take just one person to be able to, to exhibit the best experts, you know, who do you like to include on your team when you're working with clients? Well, I think you have to have like-minded professionals. Um, not all CPAs, for example, um, buy into the tax-free paradigm. So, um, Think about, think about what CPAs do. They're in the business of saving you taxes today. They know that they have a higher likelihood of keeping their job if they can, say, get you a tax refund at the end of the year or help you maximize your tax tax cool. deductions yeah. on, the, on the front end. Well, guess what? My particular, particular view of the, you know, of the retirement universe is not necessarily focused on, get, on maximizing tax deductions at historically low tax rates so that we can postpone the payment of those taxes till a point page. sometime yeah, in the future. I That's so I think yeah. having a CPA, if you're interested in shielding yourself from the impact of higher taxes, having a CPA that's cognizant of that paradigm or cognizant of the, you know, the, the fiscal landscape of our country moving forward, that also believes that tax rates in the future are likely to be dramatically higher than they are today. If Mark's watching, yeah. listen to that. <laughs> I think it's important to have um, those types of people on board. Same, same as, as far as, um, you know, attorneys go. I think it's just important to make sure that this, this team that you're building around you is, um, is like-minded, that they're on the same page when it comes to, because the power of zero tax-free paradigm is diametrically opposed, if you will. I give it to him, man. He believes in it. He moved to Puerto Rico. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So it might be 0% on a lot of stuff like capital gains and crypto totally. and whatever. But then, you know, 4%, 15% at most probably yeah, totally. paying in tax. So, like, yeah, that's part of this uh, power of zero concept. Like I said, 90% of what he's, like, yeah, it's just great. The, the, it's the uncalculated IUL. risk of what yeah. the IUL brings. Yeah. yeah. To the tax-deferred paradigm. The tax-deferred paradigm, get all the deductions that you can today because you're going to be in a lower tax bracket in retirement. That's that's exactly the opposite of how we see things going down over the next 20 to 30 years. And so you, you need a you need an attorney, you need a, a CPA, um, but you need these people to all be on the same page. And so I usually recommend you giving a copy of the powers ear to them and then just standing back and seeing seeing how they react. Right. And a lot of people read that book and they have they have an epiphany and they they change right there on the spot.
Yeah, well, it, it's certainly interesting in the forward to have Ed Slot on there. It, it certainly helps, helps give some uh, gravitas to the book. So his opinions right. are always well respected in the in the CPA landscape. Right now, and 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 uh, people say. Um, you're probably familiar with the white coat investor mm -hmm. since he's he runs in the same you know we almost he and i almost debated back in the day yeah. long ago really yeah i was set up and, and don't know what happened when i got canceled but he was he was actually pretty kind about pretty killing chill. sacred cows really he reviewed okay. it he had he had things to say about it. he disagreed with mainly my sure. stance on the market yeah called me out for straw man on something like there was a couple points i'm like yeah i get it right. see where he's coming from but i was like excited to do that debate oh that would have been amazing but he he bailed no Someone knew the two of us and uh, told me it was going to happen. Uh, and, and it didn't happen. happen. Same space. He'll say, you know, name one, one retirement expert out there that is in favor of cash value life insurance. I'd say, I'm happy to. And I quote Ed Slot. You know, he's got a whole PBS special on why cash value life insurance can do some things that nothing else can do. He says the cash value life insurance and Roth IRAs will be more, will do more to minimize minimize or eliminate taxes from your retirement plan. I just want to say cash value life insurance, by the way, includes whole life insurance. And so like the purpose of this video, the, the title of this video is two reasons I prefer IUL over whole life. And from what we've heard, one, right? the, there's been the one the and that one was just like a horrible example, right? Because it doesn't really solve the problem. You're still injecting more risk. Yeah. Whole life, you have more control over the variables, more predictability over the variables. So the rest of whatever you have going on, you're, you're going to be able to manage your whole situation much more effectively. Yeah. And from your heirs, um, you know, from the taxes your heirs would have to pay than any other combination of investments. And so Ed Slot is very um, ahead of his time when it comes to those things, which is why I asked Ed Slot to do the, um, to do the forward for my book. That's perfect. Okay, folks, that was part two of my interview with Certified Financial Planner. So here's the deal. Um, that last statement, like Ed Slot being ahead of his time, it's not ahead of his time. Like I, So I was going through um, Pirates of Manhattan by Barry Dyke the other day. Mm -hmm. um, every now and then I like to go through that book because it's just like so awesome. Like there's so, I'm like, there's so many spreadsheets. Like I'm that nerd that just loves to get into that stuff. He had this one, one um, sheet on there that was talking about percentage of life insurance owned per capita from 1945 to today. And did you know that there was more life yeah. insurance owned in 1965 with half of the amount of our population? There was more life insurance policies in force in 1965 than there are today yeah. with half the amount of population. Think about that. Like that's mind numbing. That shows a cultural problem that we have right now. And we wonder why we're going broke. And so like Ed Slot, he's an older guy. Like this is not a, this is not like a new revelation. This is like a throwback way of doing things. This is a way of like managing money. More whole life insurance was purchased in the forties, fifties, sixties, and seventies than ever. It was the creation of qualified plans of 401ks and yep. IRAs and all this stuff that has led to the problems that we're in right now, you know? And he's trying to act like he's like revolutionary and like, like a thought leader. So, so the bottom line <laughs> here is, yeah, the, the disadvantage is there is a different loan provision and percentage mm -hmm. when you're borrowing from whole life yeah. than a wash loan. Yeah. But there's a control of the premium, a control of the interest and mm -hmm. dividend. There's like once it's paid, yeah. there's a control over the death benefit being there contractually. Yep. And there's control over the cost of insurance primarily. Yeah. Where right now in IUL, there is a guaranteed, but it's very different than what's being illustrated. And people are then looking at the illustrations in a very erroneous way because it's not accurate. The fascinating thing about IUL is every time you get to control one element, there's always another element that can move. That can Too many levers moving. Exactly. Alternative to savings, we're talking about whole life. Yep. <laughs> IUL is not an alternative to savings. It's if you want to say it's an investment alternative, IUL, you could use that phrase maybe because it comes with a lot of risk. Yeah. And I would just say it's a bad investment alternative. All right, there you That's have it. it. All right.